the CTO of McDermott. If, you, if he's not at work or on a plane going between the Indian and the US teams, he's based in Texas. He enjoys cycling and doing the hills in central Texas in the heat for charities. So I know a few of you cyclers, you enjoy hanging out with, with Vagesh. Uh, so with that, Vagesh, we'll give you the next half hour. We're looking forward to hearing about how McDermott uses Alfresco for digital transformation. Yeah, I was telling Richard, I say every January, February, I start preparing for MS-150. My wife tells me I lose a few pounds, and then it's back again. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a wonderful event for multiple sclerosis. Uh, McDermott's a big supporter of the event. And uh, there's a group of us that uh, bicycle for two days. And uh, look for it every year. All right, uh, I'm told sessions after lunch or early mornings are the hardest. But you guys, it looks like you have good energy level. So just introduction, he mentioned uh, Chief Technology Officer for McDermott. Uh, McDermott is a 94-year-old company that focuses on building offshore subsea structures for oil and gas companies. I like to call us 94-year-old startup because as a company, we're very agile and very innovative, like any other startup would be. We are global. Uh, we have fabrication yards. We have engineering offices throughout the globe. I won't go through every location. We are very proud of our quality and safety record. Last quarter, our Middle East finished 58 million man hours LTI free. What that means is nobody took, had to take time off from work due to injury. And as part of the EPCI segment, in oil and gas, we are leading with digital. We intend to use digital solutions for our customers and transform not just, not just our company, but the EPCI industry as a whole. So typically, when you look at the industrial revolutions, and you, know, you can categorize them at four different ages, the digital age is different. It's different in the pace and the intensity of change. If you look at how fast technology is moving for the last few years, every few months there's something different. So while we are in early in the digital age, I feel that the digital age is going to transform how everybody works. Right? Uh, you probably hear a lot of examples on Uber and Netflix, and I won't bore you with those. But let's talk about oil and gas. Typically, when you look at industries, retail, Financial services, they lead in technology investments, IT investments. Oil and gas always has been laggards until now. With the oil prices staying low and expected to stay low, there is tremendous need for operational efficiency. And there are a lot of mature technology in digital space that we are using at McDermott and a lot of other oil and gas companies are looking to use to help with predictive maintenance, also optimizing the labor and how labor is used at the platforms and other sites. Safety. If you think about an industry where a lot of people work in very complex and hazardous conditions, oil and gas is probably up there. And for McDermott, as well as a lot of companies in this space, key focus is on safety. And I'll tell you a story, personal story. Um, a lot of you guys technologists, right? And you know the days of sitting behind a computer and coding or building stuff are gone. You have to go out there, look at how operations is done in the field, look at the yards. In my case, I go to yards, I go to vessels. And I, was, I was in a Mexico yard, and I was talking to some workers. And I said, what, what attracts you to McDermott? Why do you guys work for McDermott? And what the guy told me kind of stuck with me. He said, my wife wants me to work for McDermott. There's more. He said, my wife believes and she has faith that with the focus McDermott has on safety and the culture you guys have, she knows when I leave for work in the morning, I'll come home to the family safe. And with that, even 
my team that works on digital solutions, I tell them, guys, technology is there, but what are we doing to improve the safety, elevate the quality of work that people do in the yard or vessels, right? Apart from helping the companies with operating margins. And that's definitely key. That's what pay the bills. So when you look at technology, all the traditional efficiency levers have been expanded. We have done EDI, the electronic invoices. I believe the next set of traditional and modern levers for efficiency will come out of digital. Digital will provide the next generation of efficiency levers that allows companies to have improving operating margins, which is very much needed in oil and gas. The new technologies we are already seeing in this space, changing the paradigm and creating new business models. You're hearing about pipeline companies using drones for inspection. In our own yard, we are using visual analytics, digital analytics, to look at a lot of this old tank and the meters and readings. We are converting those into images. We are using uh, image analytics on it and getting real-time readings. Instead of somebody walking around getting those. We actually have a drone fitted with a sensor that reads RFIDs that basically goes and locates assets for us. A lot of those technologies are there, and I expect them to mature, creating a lot of efficiencies for companies. When, I, when we look at our digital journey, I see three key pillars. One is the approach. You gotta have a pragmatic approach. A lot of companies don't have a lot of investments. So it's important to look at the technologies, look at what's mature, and working with operations, pick few that works well. I met John Newton uh, when he was in Houston, and probably the best 45 minutes to hour I spent with him, right? And we have embraced his thought leadership around open thinking, design thinking, platform thinking. When I look at the teams I form, I want to make sure they have born digital mindset. I want them to think differently as they build digital products. And finally, delivery and operating digital solutions is, has to be different. I'll go a little bit in detail. So last year, we started our journey by forming a digital center of excellence. We wanted to have a separate team that focuses on digital, the solutions, different mindset. Then they went out to our yards, our vessels. They talked to operation guys on the field just to understand where the pain points are and what technologies are mature. So we started with building a lot of things for internal consumption. Middle of the year, a lot of our customers were interested in what we were doing. So we started collaborating with the customers, started to leverage some of our solutions. There are a lot of joint partnerships. And finally, our goal is to transform the industry by taking some of the products that we have built are working and commercialize them. Right? So as a whole, the industry, we wanted to kind of elevate what we do, how we do, using digital solutions. Talked about this, and I won't go much because a lot of you guys probably heard, but we truly believe that if you're working on digital products or digital transformation, you gotta have a different mindset. You gotta consider desirability, feasibility, working with the users, looking at platforms, we are we have a philosophy of cloud first. That's the only way you get the agility. How you operate has to change. So agility is number one. You don't have even months or weeks now. A lot of our customers want stuff in two weeks. They'll tell us and say, hey, can you do this? So we have a digital innovation center in Pune, and we have also developers in, uh, in Houston that work on these things in a matter of days. And what we tell them is to build minimal viable product. Something small enough in terms of footprint that users can start using, start seeing value, and they'll come back to you. And collaboration is key. It has to be intense collaboration with operation guys on the field, the guys in the yard, and the data scientists that we have that looks at the data. So I won't go through all of this, but we have daily meetings, a lot of times, weekly sprints, right? But the goal is just to quickly turn around. Um, our innovation center is divided into product teams. 
So we have a UI person on every product team. We have a QA, a cloud person, right? And the multiple teams are working on many different things. And the goal is, I tell them, guys, if you were to fail, fail fast. Right? Let's not invest too much until you, before you know things don't work. It's okay to pivot, to kind of learn from the mistakes and just kind of move on and say, okay, what works better? These are just a few of the initiatives at McDermott. I'll talk about our digital twin and also our digital content and knowledge in detail. But we started with our digital yard initiative. In Mexico, we have a yard. And one of the biggest problem was they couldn't find a lot of times assets they had. Uh, and as hard as it is, somebody had to literally walk and find things. So we started with simple things around putting solutions, putting sensors in key equipment, key assets, so we can just locate them. Right? And we started from there, it just took off. The yard guys, the operations guys were so interested that we got a lot of good support from them. Uh, that we have now deployed a lot of different solutions in the yard. Same thing with our vessel. So our company, once we engineer and fabricate things, we have a fleet of vessels that will take those structures, they'll go in the ocean, and they'll do commissioning and installation. A lot of times these vessels may have up to 400 people on it who are working. And if one of the device or one of the key systems malfunctions, they're literally waiting and sitting there. The cost of the company is very high. So we started looking at some of the key failures on the vessels and started digitizing those equipment where we work with the vendors and say, okay, what are the things we should look at, right? And a lot of OEMs can tell you a particular Consberg system or DPS system will work this way, but how do they work in combination with each other? That's the problem we were solving by digitizing a lot of this equipment on the vessel. And digital operations, this is around safety, having a digitized digital worker program. How do you really look at using sensors, just simple things around having your workers stay away from forklifts, having them stay away from hazardous area, right? As simple as what we have in our yard is just a badge with RFID. But a lot of these solutions, we are starting small, but kind of expanding in the future. Digital Twin is one of the areas our company is putting a lot of focus and a lot of acceleration in terms of development of this particular product. So essentially we are OEM for the platforms we build for our customers. We start from engineering of the product, we fabricate in our yard, we install and commission. What we are doing is, we are looking at Digital Twin as two different parts. One is your design twin. This is a 3D model of the actual asset that we built. And as we operationalize it, we are capturing key sensor data from the key parts of that asset. So the vision is, when we now hand over a product to the customer as they operate over the life of the asset, they have an exact replica digitally of a physical asset, which they can use either to look at predictive maintenance, do simulations, and really improve their margin efficiency on that particular asset. And then we also look to integrate this with their own ERP systems, their PLM systems, their content systems, right? Where it feeds in the value of data to for the asset. Digital content and knowledge. This is where we are partnering with Alfresco. So imagine 94 year old company. We pretty much have every content or document management system that you heard of. But we wanted something better, something different, something that allows us to really use the digitized content and take it to the next level. What does it mean? We want to not only digitize the content we have, but one of the things we want to do is do analytics and some machine learning intelligence on this content where we can provide insights that our users don't have today. Today, they spend about 20, 25% of the time just looking for stuff. Like if I can connect data digitize content in different ways and allow them to do analytics, they'll change the quality of work they do. Instead of just looking for information or aggregating it, they can now start making decisions for the data that we give them. 
enabling org efficiency. Again, currently, a lot of my supply chain guys, engineers, fabrication guys, they spend a lot of time just finding for stuff because things are in different systems in different regions. So globally also, we wanted to make sure we have a single platform accessible everywhere. This is where our first close partnership with Amazon was very useful. We were able to put things on the cloud in a matter of days and weeks. And our vision is we want to take all the processes across the regions and digitize them so there's a uniform process across the company. We call it the one McNamara day way. Our CEO has an initiative that says there should be one way of doing things. It doesn't matter where you are. Whether you build an asset in Batam, Indonesia, you build, you build it in Dubai. The quality, the process, the tools you use, everything should be uniform. So the customer gets the same quality, uniformity of the product that we build. I'll spend a little time on our architecture. So if you look from the left, right, this is where we gather just the data from the 3D model we call Design Twin. Then we will get a lot of data, scattered data, IoT data from our edge. So this is our operational twin. So these are different assets. It may be a particular system on a vessel. It could be a particular machine, a pipe cutting machine in our yard. We want to capture this data. And this is where your IT, OT integration uh, happens. Number two, this is essentially a data lake that could be in any cloud uh, computing product. And the goal is, that once you have this, then you want to start building application enablement layer on top. That our customers, our internal users, partners can consume and get insights and recommendations. On the right-hand side, this is where our Alfresco architecture sits, where the digitized data will be able to be mineable either through applications or other uh, algorithms that we develop. We started about six to eight months ago looking for a solution for our content. So we looked at multiple vendors. And what impressed me is uh, Ankur and Brian from Alfresco came one day and they showed the agility that Alfresco allows us to use with the Amazon platform and some of the tools they have. We were able to, and Richard's sitting here, he's probably had uh, uh, blood and sweat on this with <laughs> a lot of our team members. But in 90 days, we were able to take very, very complex data from four legacy systems and digitize it on the Amazon platform. And in a while, any new thing has challenges. The biggest one for us was around data. The data was not as clean as we expected. So we spent a lot of time cleaning the data, creating contextual linkages, so it's easy for users to find it. Our goal is in the next 10 months, we're going after 10 more sources, including stuff that's on paper, stuff that's on CDs, and digitize them. Again, the goal is, to have a single repository linked in a way where we can actually create insights. Which I don't want just a system where people can find stuff. I want to run algorithms on it to say, can I find some insights out of the data we have? This is organizational knowledge we have. Right? And I'm really excited to see where our Fresco roadmap takes us uh, in this particular area. This is just an eye chart. This is how we are organized. One of the key for us was that we don't want to bring data from our ERP systems or PLM systems, right? ERP will be record, a system of record for POs, invoices. So we wanted a solution that actually looks at all the systems and does federated search for our users. And uh, the architecture we currently have with two different zones. Uh, eventually, we are going to expand. Right now, a lot of our users are based out of Middle East, some in Asia, and some out of Houston. But as we expand the footprint where the guys are in Mexico, Brazil, uh, we also have a lot of folks uh, in Middle Eastern portion of 
Saudi Arabia, where a lot of times internet speeds and those things are very difficult to kind of get the speed. You're looking to expand the footprint. What regions are you in of AWS for this? Right now, we're using London. You should repeat the question for the recording. Yes, yeah, so the question was, uh, which regions are we in right now? Okay. And finally, just looking at our transformation journey, McDermott has 94 years of domain expertise. What we are finding is there are structures that our engineers have built, which are very complex. Customers appreciate that. And they have tremendous domain expertise. The goal for our, us as a digital COA center of excellence is how do I work with these experts and digitize the knowledge they have, create digital solution that moves the company forward. Uh, creating apps, industrial apps that we can consume internally, give it to our customers, commercialize in the future for the industry. And finally, just a few weeks ago, we started the inauguration of our digital innovation center. So now we have wings. We have a dedicated group of people in Pune and Houston that work solely on digital solutions. Using the methodology I talked earlier, having that born digital mindset. And the approach is for them to work on many different things. Build quick, minimal viable product, fail fast if you have to, and then learn from the experience and collaborate with the guys on the field just to see what works and how it works. So I'd like to invite you in a journey of unleavening the future using digital products. I believe the next set of efficiencies in our industry and a lot of industries will come from digital technologies. Can I take some questions? Yes. And, and we need to repeat questions for recording. Sure. Go ahead. Sure. The, uh, when, you, when evaluating Amazon, how did you deal with concerns around uh, content security and, uh, and vendor locking? So we are as your customer. Amazon was our, so I'll repeat the question first. The question is, how do you deal with uh, security and vendor locking? We are Azure customer now. We have a lot of our content already, and uh, we have Dev and QA on Azure. And we're happy with it. Amazon was something that I think Alfresco brought to us, and we did evaluation of it, right? And we like a few things around it. One is. Agility, we can move very fast, uh, which is what our project was designed to do. We had committed that, look, in 90 days, we'll enable a lot of this content where the users can start using it. Second thing, it gave us diversity right there. We already have one vendor now. We'll go with something else. And security-wise, uh, while I think every, everybody told us it's very secure, we are actually already working with Amazon. So we did actually hire somebody from Amazon to say, hey, give us a third party view. Once we are done, do an audit. Just make sure everything is just, all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. So, so they're mixed, right? Our approach is we are building some elements of platforms ourselves because yep. we want to capture the IP. Yep. But at the same time, we are also leveraging a lot of open source. Yep. So for storage, we do plan to use a cloud provider, either it's Amazon or Azure, right? And right now we have both. So good question. So he's asking about the AR VR element in our architecture. So he's asking about the AR VR element in our architecture, right? So in our world, we see a lot of applications in this space. One of the products that we deployed is this simple training 
So a lot of times what happens is when we have to send somebody on a vessel, we actually do a training either taking them on a vessel or a different site. With the AR VR solution, we actually have a 3D model of one of our vessels. Right, where somebody can go in there and just kind of get basic training on it, the lower cost. At the same time, just allow somebody to get a feel of being on the vessel. As we evolve in this journey, our goal is to actually look at our 3D models using that technology. Right? So we actually have a lab in Houston, and we're creating one in Pune. We will have developers start looking at how do we advance that AR VR technology. It's still early. I think uh, compute is still a challenge, right? Um, but I think the rapid pace of innovation that we are seeing, we hope in the next 16 to 18 months we can uh, get there. So right now, at the early stage, ML is what we are looking to use for a lot of data we capture from our digital vessels. So we have about 10 vessels that we plan to digitize, and maybe two more. And think about when you get data for the similar assets from these vessels. We had a, we did actually, we had a person did a small uh, product development on how a fabrication yard works. And he used ML just to see the efficiencies and the correlation between how efficient the users are, workers are on certain days of the week, certain climate, right, kind of work they do. And what we saw is that ML was about 70, 72% uh, accurate with the amount of data we had, and we had tons of data. When we digitize all our vessels, we plan to use machine learning just to kind of look at the trend and self-train those algorithms. What we don't know is how, how accurate we will get the data we have. Right? I mean, science tells you that more data you have, more and more accurate these analog algorithms will get. But that's how we plan to use them. Well, thank you for coming all the way right. from the Thank you all for listening. Yeah, thank you for coming all the way from the other hemisphere to present here at DevCon. And thank you for keeping the workers safe at McDermott. Absolutely. And let's have a round of applause for Vigesh Tavay.